As you may or may not know, especially if you watched my Root Letter playthrough, I lived in Matsue for a decade when I lived in Japan. It's a city that's especially dear to my heart and was once described by Lefkadio Hearn as the capital of the land of the gods. People in Japan often associate Matsue with ghost stories, thanks to Lefkadio Hearn's presence there, while nearby Izumo is often considered the home of Japanese mythology. It's an area full of rich history, and this week I thought we'd take a look at something that actually came up during my Root Letter playthrough, the Seven Mysteries of Matsue. The Seven Mysteries of a particular location is a common horror trope in Japan, and Matsue is no exception to this. If you played or watched my Root Letter playthrough, then you should know what they are, but let's take a bit of a closer look at the mysteries that come from my Japanese hometown. The first is Gensuke's Pillar. And this was actually the first one I ever heard about after moving to Matsue as well. Back in the early 1600s, Horio Yoshiharu ordered that a new bridge be constructed over Ohashi River. He and his clan were constructing Matsue Castle at the time, and there was only a small bamboo bridge that crossed the river, which wasn't terribly convenient for getting all the materials they needed over. Yet every time they attempted to build a bridge, it washed away. Thinking that perhaps a water spirit was angry at them, the builders decided to sacrifice someone as a hitobashira, or human pillar. As the story goes, they would select the first person to cross the small bamboo bridge the next morning, and that person happened to be Gensuke, a foot soldier. They shoved him into a box, and then buried him under a bridge pier. After that, the bridge was successfully completed, and remained standing seemingly confirming that the sacrifice worked. You can find a stone pillar dedicated to Gensuke's sacrifice just off the side of the bridge even today. Second is the legend of Yomegashima. Lake Shinji, which is one of two lakes surrounding Matsue, only has one island in it, and that's the tiny and fascinating Yomegashima. If you've seen pictures of the beautiful sunset in Matsue, then you've no doubt seen this island with the sun bright and red behind it. People are only allowed on this island during special times, and I'm happy to say that I was able to step foot on it myself during one of those times. But it's the story behind how this island got its name that makes it one of Matsue's seven mysteries. Now, there are slight variations on this depending on who you talk to, but the gist is that a young woman who lived in Matsue was being terribly bullied by her mother-in-law. One winter night, she tried to escape this abuse and run back to her parents' house. Thinking that the frozen waters of Lake Shinji would be the quickest way there, she ran out onto the lake. But of course, at some point on her way, the ice broke, and she plunged into its icy depths and died. The Kamisama of the water saw this and felt pity for the girl, so he raised an island with her corpse on it, which people then discovered the next morning. As such, it garnered the name Yomegashima. Yome meaning bride or daughter-in-law, and Shima meaning island. The third mystery is the Kitsune of Matsue Castle. As the story goes, Matsudaira Naomasa, grandson of Tokugawa Ieyasu, had a dream in which a young boy appeared to him, this boy called himself Inari Shinzaemon, and he said to Matsudaira, I will protect you from all disasters. If you build me a home inside the castle, I will not only protect the castle itself, but the mansion in Edo from fire as well. Fire was, of course, a massive problem at the time, thanks to most buildings being made of wood. So when Matsudaira woke up, he got to work right away. In 1638, the Jōzan Inari Shrine was constructed on the Matsue Castle grounds, and considering that Matsue Castle is one of the few original castles in Japan that still stands, it might be safe to say that it worked. This shrine was also one of the first places I visited in Matsue, and it's full of hundreds and thousands of kitsune statues. It's eerie and beautiful at night especially, and it was also said to be a favourite location of Lefkadio Hearns as well. The fourth mystery is yet another human pillar, this time the Hitobashira in Matsue Castle itself. Heading back to the Horio clan, when they were trying to build Matsue Castle, they were having trouble with the stone walls of the castle tower constantly collapsing. 
Again, they decided a human sacrifice was in order, and so they held a bond dance beneath the castle to find the most beautiful and skilled dancer in Matsue. They found their victim and then buried her beneath the castle tower. After that, construction was safely completed, but it certainly wasn't the end of it. The ghost of a woman was said to frequently be seen around the castle grounds after that, and bond dances were outlawed because, it was said, the castle walls themselves would shake whenever one was held. Some also believe that this unfortunate sacrifice may have played a part in the death of several high-ranking Horyo members shortly thereafter, effectively ending their clan and allowing the Matsudaira to come in and take over. The fifth mystery is the story of Azuki-Togi Bridge. This bridge was said to exist near Fumonin Temple and legend stated that the ghost of a woman would wash Azuki beans under the bridge every night. If you ever had to cross the bridge, then it was forbidden to sing the song of the Kakitsubata, which is a type of iris flower. Why? Well, the ghost didn't like it. Of course, one samurai decided to mess around and find out, so while he was crossing the bridge one day, he sang the song as loud as he possibly could. See? Nothing happened, he said when he reached the other side. Yet, as he reached the gate of his house, an unknown woman was waiting there for him. She handed the samurai a box and said it was a gift for him. Confused but happy with his surprise gift, the samurai went inside and opened it. Inside, he found the severed head of his own son. And that is precisely why you don't mess around and find out when it comes to ghosts and their strange rules. The sixth mystery is perhaps the most famous outside of Matsue, thanks to Lafcadio Hearn's retelling of it. The story of the child rearing candy. As this one goes, every night a woman knocked on the door of a candy shop after it was closed and offered a single coin for some candy. After this continued for quite some time, the owner grew suspicious and decided to follow the woman as she left one night. He followed her all the way back to the Daioji Temple graveyard, but then lost sight of her. He then heard a baby crying in a freshly dug grave close to where the woman had disappeared. Digging it up, he found the dead body of the same woman that had been visiting his store, but in her arms, she held a newborn baby, very much still alive. The woman had been pregnant when she died, and gave birth inside the coffin, so she returned as a ghost to make sure her baby still got food. The man took pity on the child, and then raised it as his own. And the seventh and final mystery is the ghost of children at Kaka no Kukedo. Kukedo means a cave, and Kaka is the name of this cave. And according to legend, this cave, or rather caves, is where the souls of children who die early gather. There's an old cave and a new cave, and the old one is also sometimes referred to as the Buddhist Kukedo. There's a belief that when children die, they are sent to a special children's limbo, where they must stack rocks on the banks of the Sanzu River for eternity. This is laborious work, and it's said that various oni come at the end of each day and knock their stones back down again, forcing them to restart day after day. Inside the old cave, you can find numerous stones, stacked and otherwise, and so people assumed that this must be the location of said children's limbo. Now it's full of Jizo statues to hopefully help guide them on their way and allow them to move on. And those are the seven mysteries of Matsue, my old hometown and the place considered by many to be the birthplace of Japanese horror. What did you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.